The basics of the D-hat process can be explained with the help of this tape. There's really not all that much to it. The device provides a simple and safe means of emergency helmet removal when a spinal trauma, such as a broken or sprained neck, is obvious or suspected. It places no loads on the neck. Instead, it places a gentle pressure spread over the top of the head through the application of low-pressure compressed air. And the source of that air need not be high-tech. The air fills a small bladder in the top of the helmet, easing it off the head. This technique can be mastered by extrication crews and medical personnel in minutes. The process consists of two basic parts. The bladder here with its airline and end fitting and a source of compressed air such as this CO2 setup with its regulators and valves or a simple three dollar hand pump. The bladders can be made in various sizes or configurations to fit any helmet the bladder part of the process is a simple folded polyester and polyethylene bag. From the bag we have an airline that ends with a quick connect fitting. This requires only a quarter turn to connect it to an air supply. The bladder of course stays in the top of the helmet ready to inflate if needed. It can be made to work with any ventilation system or technical support equipment found in helmets these days. When installed the system would normally be protected by a Nomex cover. The end fitting can be located in any protected but accessible place. To access the airline requires a simple tug. The air source may now be attached. In this case, a hand pump. The bladder quickly inflates, filling the inside of the helmet and easing it off the driver's head. There have been a number of medical directives published on the proper techniques of helmet removal from an injured person. This one happens to be from the American College of Surgeons. But they all stress the importance of maintaining inline immobilization of the head and spine so as not to cause further damage to the neck. However, up until now, they all require pulling the helmet off of the injured driver's head, which is not consistent with protecting the neck. Here in a simulated rescue, Normal rescue techniques are followed as one of the paramedics immobilizes the head while another unhooks the helmet strap. When the strap is undone, the glasses are removed, and the airline is deployed. The end fitting is connected to the air source, and the bladder is inflated. Normal rescue techniques are continued. As the helmet comes off, the paramedic at the bottom of the helmet is sliding his hands along the back of the head, supporting it, while his partner guides the helmet. When the helmet is off, the paramedic on the right applies a cervical collar while the other continues to support the head. The only difference between this and a routine rescue is that here, no tension is placed on the neck. On the track, where riders and machines are pushed to the absolute limit, innovation in systems, equipment and safety go hand in hand. Often, it is only when the unexpected happens that much of this progress comes into play. Improved braking systems, suits and helmet design all can stop an accident becoming a disaster. However, when an accident does occur, the potential for injury doesn't stop once the rider has come to a halt. The helmet, which is instrumental in the reduction of head injuries, may need to be removed by the roadside and this manipulation may worsen neck or spinal injuries. But now, another innovation from the world of racing addresses these fears and provides a safe and easy procedure for helmet removal. Hats off! The hats off kit includes the inflation bag with tube and valve, a hand pump, a velcro cover, identification badge, helmet stickers and fitting instructions. The hats off system can be fitted into all modern safety helmets. Once installed, the wearer is totally unaware of its presence. However, in the event that the helmet needs to be removed, hats off provides both a safe procedure and peace of mind. The hats off technique is now becoming widely accepted by basics doctors and registered paramedics as the preferred method of emergency helmet removal. Race track air and road ambulance rescue crews are using the device. When tending to a rider, 
The identification badge indicates that the system is present in the helmet and the location of the tube. The rescue crew can then use the rider's own pump or they can attach the valve to an oxygen cylinder carried on all ambulances. Hats Off is endorsed by Bill Phillip and Gary Yendel, the 2003 British Supersides Sidecar Championship duo. I've been involved in motorsport racing for several years now at club, British and at world championship level. This is my second year having the hats off removal system fitted into our helmets. I have seen the device, I have actually seen it being used in, fit, in full at the side of the circuit. This to me inspires so much confidence knowing that we have this system, knowing if we have any problems then this can be used properly. The hats off helmet kit is also compulsory in the American IndyCar Racing League and the championship auto racing teams and NASCAR have strongly recommended its use. It combines low tech with low cost and is simple to fit and use. Best of all, hats off means that any neck and spinal injuries will not be aggravated by the removal of a helmet. Hats off, racetrack innovation for everyday protection.